Quick Start Tutorial Stretched Thin Plate with a Hole This example is a well-known benchmark test case from Structural Mechanics, a thin plate with a circular hole in the center, with a uniform load applied along one axis. The plate is considered to be infinitely long, made of steel, and thin enough to satisfy the two-dimensional plane stress approximation. The computed solution will be compared with linear elasticity theory, where it is expected that the maximum stress in the direction tangential to the load should be three times the stress of a plate without a hole. This tutorial can be run by selecting Model Examples and Tutorials, Quick Start, Thin Plate with a Hole, from the File menu, and followed with the step-by-step -step instructions in the User's Guide. To start a new model click the New Model Toolbar button, or select New Model from the File menu. In the New Model dialog box, select 2D for the space dimensions, and then choose Plane Stress from the Select Physics drop-down menu. Leave the space dimension and dependent variable names to their defaults, and press OK to finish the physics mode selection. Geometry Mode The geometry of the plate can be created by first making a square for the base, and then subtracting a circle from the lower right corner. To create a rectangle, first click on the Create Square Rectangle Toolbar button. Then left click in the main plot axis window, and hold down the mouse button. Move the mouse pointer to draw the shape outline, and release the button to finalize the shape. The geometry object properties must now be edited to set the size and position of the rectangle. To do this, click on the rectangle R1 to select it, which also highlights it in red. Then click on the Inspect Edit Selected Geometry Object Toolbar button. In the Edit Geometry Object dialog box, change the XY min and XY max point coordinates to define a rectangle with length and height 0.05 and lower left corner at the origin. Finish editing the geometry object and close the dialog box by clicking OK. To create a circle or ellipse, first click on the Create Circle Ellipse Toolbar button. Then left click in the main plot axis window, and hold down the mouse button. Move the mouse pointer to draw the shape outline, and release the button to finalize the shape. The object properties of the ellipse E1 must be changed to make a circle. Click on the ellipse E1 to select it and highlight it in red, and use the Inspect Edit Selected Geometry Object tool to set the center and radius. To subtract the circle from the rectangle first select both geometry objects by clicking on them, so that both are highlighted in red, and then click on the Subtract Geometry Objects button. Alternatively, if the circle is obscured by the rectangle they can be selected by holding the Control key, while clicking on the labels R1 and E1 in the selection list box, or in this case simply pressing Control A to select all objects. Select R1 and E1 in the Geometry Object Selection List box. Press the Subtract Geometry Objects Toolbar button. Grid Mode 
switch to grid mode by clicking on the corresponding mode toolbar button. The default grid may be too coarse to ensure an accurate solution. Decrease the grid size to generate a finer grid that better can resolve the curved boundary. Enter 0.001 into the grid size edit field. Press the generate button to call the automatic grid generation algorithm. Equation mode. Switch to equation mode by clicking on the corresponding mode toolbar button. Equation and material coefficients can be specified in equation subdomain mode. In the equation settings dialog box that automatically opens, Enter 0.3 for the Poisson S ratio and 210 GPa for the modulus of elasticity. The other coefficients can be left to their default values. Press OK to finish the equation and subdomain settings specification. Note that FEA tool works with any unit system, and it is up to the user to use consistent units for geometry dimensions, material, equation, and boundary coefficients. A convenient way to define and store coefficients, variables, and expressions is using the model constants and expressions functionality. The defined expressions can then be used in point, equation, boundary coefficients, as well as post-processing expressions, and can easily be changed and updated in a single place. In order to define an expression for the load force, press the constants toolbar button, or select the corresponding entry from the equation menu, and enter the following variables in the model constants and expressions dialog box. Boundary mode. Switch to boundary mode by clicking on the corresponding mode toolbar button. Boundary conditions are defined in boundary mode and describes how the model interacts with the external environment. In the Boundary Settings dialog box, first select all boundaries and set all conditions to edge loads with a value of zero. The selected boundaries will be highlighted in red. Then select the left boundary in the left-hand side boundaries list box number 5 and select Fixed Displacement, U and Zero Edge Load, Y Deer. This will fix the displacement in the X direction for this boundary. Continue by selecting the bottom boundary, number 2, and choose the Zero Edge Load, X Deer and Fixed Displacement, V Boundary Conditions. This similarly fixes the lower boundary. Lastly, select both edge load boundary conditions for the right boundary, number 3. Set the edge load in the x direction on this boundary to the previously defined load expression. Finish the boundary condition specification by clicking the OK button.
Now that the problem is fully specified, press the Solve Mode Toolbar button to switch to Solve Mode. Then press the Tool button, with an equals 2 sign, to call the solver with the default solver settings. After the problem has been solved FEA tool will automatically switch to post-processing mode and display the computed von Mises stress. To change the plot, open the post-processing settings dialog box by clicking on the plot options toolbar button. Select stress, X component from the predefined surface plot expressions drop-down menu. Press OK to plot and visualize the selected post-processing options. One can evaluate and find the value of an expression by directly clicking anywhere on the surface plot. Alternatively, the min-max evaluation post-processing tool can be used to find the maximum tangential stress. Select Min Max Evaluation from the Post menu. Select Stress, X component from the Evaluation Expression drop down menu. Press OK or apply to calculate and show the minima and maxima. From the result one can see that the maximum value of the tangential stress is close to 30 MPa which is in full agreement with the expected solution. The stress along the left symmetry axis can also be plotted with the point line evaluation feature, and compared with the equivalent of the exact analytical solution. Select point line evaluation from the post menu. Select Stress, X component from the predefined evaluation expressions in the drop down menu. Then enter 0 and the vector expression for the evaluation coordinates in the X and Y directions. Press the Apply button. Now plot the equivalent analytical solution. Enter the expression into the edit field. The computed and analytical stress curves will be very close indicating an accurate solution. The tutorial is now complete, and the model can be saved as a binary file, exported as a MATLABM script file, or a GUI playback file.